In Davos this week, let's take a listen to what was said on Squawk Box about the likelihood of rate cuts this year, starting with Goldman Sachs' CEO, David Solomon. It's hard for me to see the market's view of seven cuts, you know, this year. Um, you know, I do think there's a reasonable possibility of some interest rate cuts and some easing. But it's really going to be dependent on, on what the data says and how the economy transmits through the As year. I do think we are probably past peak inflation. Um, what's interesting, though, Becky, is like it is not inconceivable that we have to go faster, mm -hmm. i.e. 50 basis points. If you sort of price that out, it's kind of 5 or 10 percent. We have four rate cuts, not the six or seven in the market for this year, for this year, 24, 4 and 25, which leaves you the 3 percent plus Fed funds rate. Probably have a four forward handle on a 10 year. That'd be a normal rate curve for those yeah. of us who have been around a long time. Moynihan going without the top coat. Ooh, baby. All right, let's get some reaction from Steve Steinauer, chairman, president, CEO, and lots of other things at Huntington Bank shares. He also previously served on the board of the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. Steve, we'll get to your bank's earnings, which came out today in just a minute. Let's start, however, with the Fed and see where you are uh, on the speed, pace, and uh, frequency of uh, interest rate cuts this year. Where are you standing? We model uh, both the forward rate curve and then uh, we have an adjusted curve, and, and it's more in line with what you heard uh, from those three CEOs. Three, four cuts generally later in the year, uh, obviously data dependent. What does that do to your business if rates come down at that level? Helpful? Well, if it's three or four cuts, it's helpful. If it's uh, six or seven, that might imply a, a <laughs> yeah. soft economy. And uh, that would not be helpful to us and, and anyone else. But, uh, but we model it both ways. And uh, in either direction, we've got a very tight net interest margin, uh, part of that through hedging. You're a major, major presence in the markets you serve, many of them in the, in the Middle West, Ohio, West Virginia, Indiana, so those places. How's business? How's the economy there? Business is generally good, and the consumer's uh, still reasonably strong. Delinquencies, which might be an indicator, came in, uh, we're still well below uh, 2019 in terms of core, some of our core products. So uh, housing uh, prices are stable. Um, uh, housing uh, for sale is a very limited supply. So on many indicator fronts, uh, things look good. And businesses are generally having a good year. Not necessarily a great one, but a good year. This rate uh, pivot by the Fed will be helpful. I, I'm looking now at earnings today, Steve, that you had an earnings beat but a revenue miss. Um, and, and, then, and then when I'm diving into the details here, that your average total loans and leases increased $445 million from the prior quarter to $121.2 billion and then um, increased 2 percent from the year ago quarter. What does that tell you about your consumer and their economic health? Well, the, the industry generally has uh, pivoted a bit uh, off of what happened at Silicon Valley because of uncertainty. So you've heard expressions of things like RWA diets and others. We didn't do that. We chose to continue to support our customers and grow our loan portfolio. But it's off. 23, it was 2 percent for the year. 22 was 10 percent. We purposefully slowed it down with all the uncertainty about where rates were going and what the underlying economy uh, per would perform at. Now, uh, the certainty or the confidence post the pivot gives us a lot more confidence in growing the portfolio, uh, loan portfolio, and that was what we shared on the earnings outlook today. How does an executive like you and at other banks prepare for what I think caught some uh, maybe more casual observers of the banking industry a little bit by surprise, and that is the charges that the FDIC imposed uh, on banks. How do you plan for that? How do you know how much is coming and, and how do you prepare for the write-offs or the markdowns that you have to take as a result of that? Well, you can't plan per se because it's, it's large bank failures and then it's, it's losses as a consequence of those. And we haven't seen large bank failures now for a decade no. and a half. You have to go back to 2009 or 10. So it's, there's not a budgeting capacity for this. And the better, you know, ultimately the, the banks, the management and boards are responsible, but the better the, 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 the regulators do in terms of oversight, the smaller those losses should be um, that would hit the fund. And the banks support FDIC insurance, not the taxpayer, the banks do. So in this particular case, uh, uh, an extraordinary level of losses uh, out of two of the banks. And, 
and we and others have to replace, you know, and so what did it cost you? Dollars. What did it cost you? For us, you? it was a little over uh, $200 million. $200 million that just comes right out of the hide of the, of the bank. That's right. That's right. Well, Steve, thank so you very one -time much. one-time expense um, that we and others have. You can't budget it. You just absorb it. We have net earnings beyond that. We grow capital, grow liquidity, and continue to perform and meet our customers' needs. And there you see a lot of regional banks moving uh, very nicely today, including yours, up 3.5%. Uh, Steve Steinauer, thanks very much for being with us.